Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Draw with Rob with me, Rob Bidolf. That's a picture of me on the back of the Draw with Rob activity book. Now then, I am a children's author and illustrator. You might know me from books such as this one. It's called Odd Dog Out. It's the one that's all about the sausage dog that doesn't fit in with the other sausage dogs. Or maybe you know, well you won't know me from this book, so I'll tell you why. This is my brand new book. At the time of recording, it's not quite out yet. I think it comes out in a week or two's time. So I'm very excited about this one. It's called Dog Gone. It's all about this chap here called Teddy. You might recognize Teddy from an earlier Draw with Rob video. I think number 23, I showed you how to draw Teddy here, who is a pug. And um, he loses his human. You can see there the day I lost my human. He uses his, loses his human. Uh, when he takes his human out for a walk. That's how it works, you see, really. We all know. We all think we take our dogs out for walks. No, dogs take us out for walks. So he loses his human and he learns a, he learns a little lesson in the course of the day that he lost his human. So I'm very excited about that book. You can pre, or well, actually, by the time you watch this, probably, it's in all likelihood, the book will be pretty much out. So you can order this book now. I'm really proud of it. I hope you like it. Right. Now then, we are here today, as per usual, to do a drawing together. Are we in the centre? We're in the centre. Okay, and what we are drawing today, we are drawing a bird today, and a really special, sorry, my chair is creaking. That's not very good, is it? We are drawing a very beautiful bird called a puffin. Now then, do you guys know what puffins are? They are a very, they're a bird that they only live, I think, I think I'm right in saying that they only really live in a couple of places in the world. I think most of them, they live in Iceland. They breed in Iceland. I know there's some uh, are on an island just off the coast of Wales too, I think. Do you know what? Let's put some facts up here because I think we need a bit of a kind of fact check on this because I have, I have been known to make mistakes in the past, but I'm pretty sure that there are some puffins that live just off the coast of Wales somewhere, but I will put it up here for you now. But anyway, the reason that I want to show you how to draw a puffin today is because I just think they are beautiful. They're really, really cute birds. They have lovely colorful beaks and they've got real sort of personality, I think. So I thought it would be a good idea to show you how to draw one. What do you think? Good plan? Jolly good, right. Okay, so this is how it works. Just in case you've never watched one of these videos before, this is how it works. Basically, lots of children, they tell me when I go on school visits and do festival uh, events and things like that, they, lots of children say to me that they don't think they can draw. But I say that everybody can draw. It's just a question of knowing the order to do the drawing in. So that's where I can step in and help you out because I can show you the order to do the drawing in. So this is how it works. I'm going to do a little bit of the drawing on my piece of paper here. Then you can pause your video and you can copy exactly what I do. Then start the video up again and I'll draw some more. Pause it. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. I draw. You draw. And then by the end we're going to end up with a really, really cool picture of a puffin. Okay, so what you're going to need is a piece of paper, just a piece of A4 paper. Um, something to draw with, a pen or a pencil. Maybe a bit later you might want something to colour with. Don't worry if you haven't got anything to colour with. You don't need to colour anything in. You can just shade it with your pencil. That's absolutely fine. The main thing is you are taking part and getting involved. Why don't you get your grown-ups to get involved too? I like it when mums and dads and grandparents send me their pictures. It's really fun to see. Right, shall we start our drawing? Okay, so we are going to start with a very simple circle shape right in the middle of our page. We're going to do it quite big. Okay, so a nice big circle in the middle of our page. Now circles are quite difficult to draw freehand. You might have a compass or something which would help you draw a perfect circle freehand. But do you know what? What do I always say? Your drawing does not have to be perfect at all. My circle here is not perfect. I can already see it's slightly lopsided. That does not matter in the slightest. I always think those slight imperfections in drawings are what give them their charm. So there we go. Quite a big circle in the middle of the page. Mine's slightly towards the top and slightly towards the left, actually. But don't worry too much. Roughly there is fine. 
Okay, now we're gonna draw another shape. But before we draw the shape, I'm gonna make, do you know sometimes I do that thing where I make a couple of marks that help us out with our drawings before we actually do the shapes of the things that we're drawing. And I'm gonna do that again. Now I want you to go to sort of roughly the center of your circle and then I just want you to come down and to the left just a little bit, okay, to about there. And I just want you to make a little dot, okay. Then straight across the page, um, right, if you imagine, if you can sort of picture in your head that distance between your dot and the edge of the circle there, I want you to go straight across and and do the same distance between this edge of the circle there and I want you to make another dot. That is not a very clear explanation, is it? <laughs> I'm really sorry, I sort of started talking. I was like, I don't know where I'm going with this, but look, I tell you what, I'm gonna take the lid of one of my pens. Can you see that distance between the dot and the edge of the circle is roughly the same length as the lid of my pen and I've done it the same length as the lid of my pen from the edge of the circle out again, if you see what I mean making things much more complicated than they need to be. Let's put that lid back on. We don't want my pen to dry up. Okay, and then once you've done that, what I want you to do is I want you to draw, we're basically gonna draw sort of like a big eye shape, okay? So what I want you to do is from that dot, I want you to draw a great big curved line, goes through our circle and joins up with the other dot there, okay? And then we're gonna do exactly the same on the top, we're gonna go up, and over like a great big sort of eye shape and we're going to join up with the other point like that okay so we've got a circle interlocking with a great big eye shape okay right then the next thing we're going to do we're going to draw another circle this time our circle is going to be underneath the first circle that we drew and i think we're going to do it very slightly smaller so just underneath, a bit smaller, about that sort of size. I'm gonna draw another circle, like that. Again, my circle is nowhere near perfect. Don't worry about that at all. Okay, now the next thing, we are gonna draw yet another one of these eye shapes, but we're not gonna draw the whole eye shape, we're just gonna draw sort of one end of it, and we're gonna join it up to that circle that we've just drawn. So, from the bottom of the circle, we're gonna come up, and we're gonna stop about there. So about halfway up the circle, that's where our point of our, the corner of our eye shape is gonna be. And then we're gonna go back around and up there. Okay? Are you starting to see our little puffin take shape? I am. Okay, now then, the next thing to do is where our little eye shape joins the side of our circle here, so about, right about this point, I want you to draw a curved line that comes up and goes around and joins up with the side of our circle, like that. Okay. Now then, it's time to do a bit of shading, a bit of colouring in, just with whatever, you, I'm using a black pen, so if you're using a black pen too, I want you, keep, want you to keep that black pen in your hand for this bit of shading, or if you're using a pencil, just use the same pencil. And what I want you to do, we're gonna colour in this area, and we're gonna colour in all of this area around here, okay? So do it as carefully as you can. Remember, go slow when you get to the edges, all that sort of thing. And I'm gonna, you don't wanna watch me coloring this in carefully in normal time, do you? So I'm gonna go into super speed mode for this bit. So I'll see you back here in about 10 seconds or so, okay? Remember, go slow when you get to the edges. Here we go. Righty-ho, there's my coloring in done. So you should end up with something that looks a little bit like that. And that really is starting to look a lot like a little puffin, isn't it? Okay, right. Shall we give our puffin, what should we do next? Should we give, should we wake our puffin up? I think that would be a good thing to do. Let's give our little puffin an eye. So this area here is obviously our puffin's beak, isn't it? So just to the left of the beak. So around about here, ooh. My computer over there has just woken up. Did you hear that big sort of sound like a jet taking off, didn't it? Maybe it didn't pick it up on the microphone. <laughs> but anyway, where was I? Yes, we just sort of here, we're gonna draw a quite small circle. Lots of circles in this drawing of a puffin, isn't there today? 
just like that. That's going to be our puffins, the outline of our puffins eye. I'm going to switch pens actually for this bit because I need something slightly thinner. Then, where should we do our puffin looking? Let's do our puffin looking at us. Now, do you remember my trick? We don't do the little pupil right in the center of the eye, do we? We do it slightly to the left. So here we go. I'm going to do our puffin's pupil just about there. Let me make it a bit bigger than I normally would. There we go. Our puffin, you see, even though it's to the left, it looks like he or she is looking straight at us, doesn't it? Let's add a few little eyelashes. Just three, I think, today. One, two, three. And our puffin is gonna be a happy puffin. So let's add an eyebrow all the way up here, a long way above our little puffin's eye. Lovely. Okay, now, let's add, let's give, let's just add a few little tufts of little feathery hair up here. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna add a sort of curvy point shape like that on that area of the head. And we're gonna add another one, pretty much exactly the same, just above it. And then one last one above that. The rule of three, you see, I always do threes. Well, not always, but quite often. I do things in threes, like the eyelashes down there. There we go, a little tuft of puffiny hair. Now then, we need to give our puffin some feet. So this is how we're gonna do that. They've got these lovely yellow, sort of quite big, sort of flippery feet. So what I want you to do is just at the point here where uh, the tummy goes white, so it turns from black to white, just there, I want you to draw a little line coming down diagonally like that, okay? And then I want you to draw another line right next to that, but not quite as long, so slightly shorter, just like that, okay? Then, coming out of that shorter line, we are gonna draw yet another straight line, this time sort of pointing slightly upwards. Then we're gonna go down at the same angle, no, actually, slightly different angle, slightly steeper, uh, it's less, yeah, slightly steeper angle, like that. And then we're gonna join up with the longer line. And there we go, we have a little sort of flippery shaped puffin foot. And we're gonna do another one exactly the same, but we'll do our puffin walking along. So we're gonna sort of move the whole thing around a little bit at an angle. So exactly the same, one long line, slightly shorter line, a diagonal line coming up, another one going out like that, and then we join the two up. So there we go, lovely little puffin -y feet. Oh, this little puffin is very cute. I like this little chap or chapess. There we go. I think we're pretty much done now with the outline. It's a very simple drawing, this one, today. Just lots of quite simple shapes that kind of all combine to give us a lovely puffin character. Now then, the key with puffins is the colouring, isn't it? Now then, they are black and white birds. They're a bit sort of penguin-like, actually, in their colouring. They have these white tummies and their heads and their bodies are black, but I mentioned already that they have these lovely gold and yellow kind of feet and legs. What's the other thing that is always very colourful on a puffin? That's right, the beak. The beak is lovely and colourful, sort of stripy, isn't it? And do you know what? I've got a very interesting puffin fact. I don't even need to put up one of my little education station things for this, because I just know it. Their beaks, they change colour throughout the course of the year. So depending on the season, the temperature, where they are, the beaks change colour. <gasps> Isn't that amazing? Multicolored beaks. So, what that means is, as you are coloring in your puffin, there really are no rules. You can do your beaks whatever color, whatever patterns you like, because actually in real life, their beaks change color. I think I'm gonna stick to the sort of traditional colors of the sort of reddy orangey, and they sort of have stripes, yellow and goldy sort of stripes. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. But honestly, you do whatever you want. If you don't have any colors, just shade, shade the beak in, maybe a little bit darker than this area here that would work like nicely, same with the legs. But if you do have colors, I want you to really go for it, okay? Right, so I'm gonna see you back here in about 30 seconds or so, and we're gonna have lovely, colorful puffin drawings, okay? You ready? Three, two, one, let's go.
and there we are that didn't actually take me very long at all to color that one in it's a very simple drawing today so can you see i've done this is actually what their beaks quite often they look like this they sort of have a yellow bit then it gets gradually more sort of it sort of graduates towards the darker red of the tips of their beak there lovely yellow feet i've added a little bit of light blue in a few places here just to add a little bit of kind of contouring a little bit of shading here and there because i think that nice light blue color is sort of adds a little pop of sort of freshness and i've used it in the shadow remember what i said about shadow you just add a little bit of scribble around the areas where the feet touch the ground and then you sort of make it get a bit darker the nearer you get to the foot and it really makes it look like they're standing on a surface so there we go a very simple puffin drawing all that remains for me to do now is to sign my drawing so i'm just going to add my name down here rob there we go so how have you got on how have your puffins turned out i'm really really looking forward to seeing them i can't wait to see them so what you need to do you get your grown-up to take a picture of your drawings and then if they share it on social media using this this hashtag here draw with rob you can post that on instagram or twitter um, and that way hopefully i'll get to see it if you use that hashtag if you're watching on facebook just add it to the comments down below here um, and that way i'll get to see it and then what happens is i we randomly choose about 80 or 90 of them and we put them up in a grid so fingers crossed yours will make the grid listen i hope you've had a nice time drawing this puffin with me today i've certainly enjoyed showing you how to draw him or her i'm going to see you very soon for another draw with rob video in the meantime everybody take care of yourselves and i'll see you soon bye bye You didn't expect to see me that soon, did you? <laughs> I hope you really enjoyed that video that you've just watched. I can't wait to see the drawings that you've done. Don't forget to share them using the Draw With Rob hashtag. I just wanted to pop up here and remind you that the Draw With Rob activity book is out now. If you would like to grab yourself a copy, you can get it from wherever you get books from and it's full of really cool things for you to do, colouring pages, lots of the draw alongs of your favourite characters that we've done on these videos here. And there's a little frame for you to draw your pictures in. Perforated edge so you can tear the picture out easily and stick it up on the wall. But there's loads of really cool things for you to do. As I said, colouring pages, um, little things. I've started drawings off and you've got to finish them, that kind of thing. And then right at the end, if you go through the book and you really enjoy yourself, look, there's even your very own certificate to stick up on your wall to say that you are officially an ace artist. So there you go. That book is available now. I'll stick a link somewhere in the post or on the YouTube page for you if you are interested in buying it. In the meantime, this time I really am going. I'll see you very soon for another Draw With Rob video. Take care.